Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. In the name of the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. I don't know about you, but I love a good story. Who doesn't? We live in a culture and society that loves to be entertained. 99.9% .9 of us either have cable today or a plethora of streaming services that include hundreds of channels and access to thousands of movies and television shows at the touch of a button. And beyond television and film, if you're a little old-fashioned like me, you also might have a load of books, or at least a membership card to that most ancient secret society of knowledge and power known as the library. <laughs> I certainly love a good book, a good novel, fiction and nonfiction alike, as long as it has a good story to be told within it. And if you hang out in the church for very long, you will quickly find out that we Christians tend to be lovers of good stories as well, for the Bible is loaded with them. But every now and then, our deep love of storytelling reveals itself as going a little bit beyond just those stories of kings and queens, prophets, apostles, and princes in the Bible. A number of years ago at the parish I was serving at the time, I was approached by a few parishioners who wanted to know if they could gather in the church parish hall to acknowledge and celebrate the 50th anniversary of what they were all convinced was the greatest American television series of all time, Star Trek. <laughs> now, I have seen the movies that were based on the Star Trek series, both the original films back in the 1970s and 80s, and of course, the latest remake of the films that began in the early 2000s. But really, I'm still a bit too young to have watched any of the original television series that started airing back in the year of our Lord, 1966. <laughs> still, after much prayer and consideration, even though I knew this would be a party that really didn't have much in any way, shape, or form to do with our Christian faith. I said, sure, why not? I guess because in truth I am a lover of that other sci-fi galaxy far, far away. The one with Jedis and lightsabers and the Force. And because I believe that a good story can find ways to reach our faith and spirituality, I thought there would be no harm at all if we opened up the church parish hall to a Star Trek 50th anniversary bash. And when that day finally arrived, I even decided I ought to go check it out myself. I must admit, I didn't get my chance or get the note that said I needed to go pick up pointed Spock ears, but the good people still let me in. And wouldn't you know it, Forget about the church and all of its good work and the community and our outreach. When I walk through the door, there standing with a camera in hand, thanks to the popularity of Trekkies everywhere, was a reporter from our local community newspaper. And yes, when the next episode, uh, the next issue, I'm sorry, came out, there I was right in the middle of page eight. <laughs> the local parish priest gathered in with his beloved friends, parishioners, and a whole lot of excited Star Trek enthusiasts. <laughs> Spock, I'm quite sure, must have been smiling down from the Starship Enterprise somewhere up in the Alpha Quadrant of the heavenly realm. <laughs> but really, isn't it those great tales and stories like Star Trek or of Star Wars, of Herman Melville's Moby Dick, or of J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings trilogy and so many others that not only entertain us, but also inspire and excite us. They can help us understand who we are, what we face as human beings. 
And they can help us land on what we really come to believe in this life through rich storytelling that mixes in with the myths and legends of thousands and thousands of years of human history. From the Greek and Romans of antiquity all the way up to the Avengers and Neil Gaiman's Sandman, one of my favorites, right here in the present time. The stories and myths of the past and the story creators and the new myth makers of right now. And brothers and sisters, this morning of all mornings, we too are arriving again at what many of us perceive to be a really great story. One we've all heard many, many, many times before. The story of Jesus Christ's resurrection from the dead. The Easter story. Over this past week here at St. Thomas and in Christian churches all around the world, the unfolding of the story that leads up to today has been recited again. Of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey with palms and cloaks carpeting the ground. Of his time in that upper room with his friends and his disciples washing their feet and sharing with them a new Passover meal of bread and wine. Of the long night of prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane and the betrayal and arrest that followed leading up to Golgotha, the hill of the skull and the bloody execution on the hard wood and with the iron nails of the cross. And finally, to the laying of the beaten and ravaged body of Jesus in a quiet stone tomb in a peaceful garden. It has become for many in the world the story of stories. And yes, there are more than a few movies that have been made, a couple of TV series, a few plays and great musicals, and even a handful of graphic novels and children's cartoons. But really, if we are honest, I think there's a huge problem with the story of Christ's death and resurrection. It really doesn't fit the layout of a good novel as a good novel has been understood over the course of our human history. Seriously, there is no long ago in a galaxy far, far away. There's no opening line like, call me Ishmael. There's not even a simple once upon a time. With the writings about the story of Jesus in the Gospels, there is no way to avoid the simple fact that it fails terribly at producing what we generally call a good myth, and especially from that period of time in which the Gospels were written. In the Gospels, the writers seem far more focused on laying out hard dates and times for the reader. Historical figures are names that can be traced through archaeology and ancient records. There are no allegories or proper metaphors or well laid out literary verse. It is simply a historical record of a man who lived and then had been executed by the terrible Roman method of crucifixion and how after three days he reappeared not as a ghost or as a superhero but simply as he had been before his torturous death, alive and well and physically resurrected. There certainly could have been some more amazing action scenes had the writers of the gospel been great myth makers. Stories perhaps of revenge and reverse justice a tale of the Roman Empire overturned and the great king the Jews had been looking for finally retaking Jerusalem and restoring the land of Israel to its rightful owners. That would have made certainly for a much better novel to read or a film to eventually watch. But that's just it. The story of Jesus' resurrection, the story of Easter has and will never fit our worldly understandings of good myth. It is a story that reverses the entire world's view of what makes a good story in the first place or how a good myth should come and be told and end. And by its turning upside down the stories we've heard before and come to expect of violence that leads to more violence, of power coming only to the strong and the wealthy, of fleeting human love and of death's impending certainty. 
The Easter story of the resurrection of Jesus becomes something unique and different, something that I would say and the world would say is earth-shattering and earth-transforming. Jesus Christ and the story of his life, death, and resurrection is, in fact, the completion of what myth and story in our human existence has only ever been able to express through that which we human beings know and can see and imagine. Jesus brings all the stories and wonders we struggle and fail at time and time again back around to what God sees, what God envisions, and what God will finish. Jesus reveals to us through his sacrifice of himself on the cross the deep love of God that overturns that which has always enslaved us and threatened us from the beginning, which is sin and death. His story becomes nothing less than the way, as it was first known, showing us how we cannot just imagine but truly live our lives more fully and completely in freedom, removing the requirements and demands of a sin-engulfed world. It is all this, brothers and sisters, that makes this Easter story truly the greatest story ever told because it is not just a story it is the absolute truth to put it another way the story of the resurrection of Jesus because it was not just a story but because it was also history and reality gives your life and my life a real promise of being able to experience and live out the very same story for our life and discipleship and in faith in Jesus Christ has the real true hope of being utterly transformed into what God intended humanity to be, to change us, to alter our souls, and to renew our world again. The action of Christ's resurrection sets into motion the restoration of the incredible, all-encompassing love which God, our Creator, intended when God first spoke His Word, when He breathed on the earth and set it into perfect motion, and when He made us in His own image, giving us a garden with everything and calling us and all of His creation good. And if you're sitting out there right now thinking to yourself, well, this is exactly what I expect a priest to say to me from the pulpit on Easter Sunday. Just another set of proclamations with no evidence like the story of the resurrection itself on Easter Sunday morning 2,000 years ago. If that's what's running through your head right now, that's okay. But will you come and talk with me after this service? Will you let me or Jeannie or Dave tell you our own stories? The stories about how our lives have been physically changed through the living Jesus Christ. And if you think that hearing it from clergy isn't good enough because it's what you would expect to hear from us, will you let us introduce you to one of the hundreds of people who we know personally, many sitting right here in these pews right now. Our personal stories are nothing less than our own Easter stories. The stories of how in a moment of darkness, in a moment of pain, in a hospital room or in a funeral home or out in the streets on a rainy day or maybe on a sunny day, in our own quiet rooms, in a lonely place or in places surrounded by love and caring, we have been absolutely transformed, restored and resurrected by no one else except the living Jesus. These are the Easter stories that pick up when the gospel in the New Testament ends today. And they don't just fit this day. They stretch out through day after day, year after year, life after life, changed and saved by faith and discipleship and trust in Jesus. St. Paul writes in his incredible letter to the church in Rome, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him 
by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen today. And because he first touched every bit of the pain you and I can ever touch, because he was willing to die that terrible death on the cross, because he was even willing to descend into hell to overthrow its dominion and power, because he was willing to do all of that and then stand up and walk out of that tomb and finally defeat death, this day is the story of all stories, the greatest story ever told. Not just for Jesus or for the early church, but for you and for me now and always. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.